older gent. Welcome. Here you are. Poker chip. Compliment the mayor, Nard Lundy. Just wolf right over the El Dorado Saloon and empty yourself into a fortune. Remember to vote. It's Nard Lundy's town. Let's keep it that way. Welcome to Boulder. Thank you, son. Here you are. Compliment to the mayor. Now, why should the mayor give me free poker chips? Election time's coming in two weeks. Just the mayor's way of making sure you remember his name come voting time. Vote? I can't vote. I don't even live here. I just came here to see my daughter and her husband. Good! You've got family here that's just the same as resident. Now, don't forget to vote. It's Nard Lundy. Like I always figured, Jeff Rose is full of pickle juice. <laughs> I'm Captain Orrin Hayes, leader of the Texas Rangers. That man you just shot full of holes happens to be my son-in-law. You tell me where I can find his newspaper office? Yeah, around the corner there to the right. Captain Hayes. Sweetheart. What are you doing so far from Texas? Why didn't you let us know you were coming? Oh, I thought I'd surprise you. I haven't seen you since you were married. I've been retired from the Rangers now for some years. And you got lonesome. Well, a man just can't quit. Can't sit around and listen to your arteries, Harden. I want some action, travel. Help starve the blood. But we're real happy to see you. And you stay as long as you please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Say... Looks like you've got quite a business going here. But, uh, tell me something, son. What are those wanted posters on you around town? Oh, those aren't wanted posters, Papa. Those are campaign posters. Jeff is a candidate for mayor. Well, the way they're shooting his picture full of holes, I'd say you're not wanted. Well, mayor Lundy's a very clever opponent, Captain. Owns most of this town and runs it from his Hell Dorado saloon. Well, <laughs> Charlie, how are you? Lovely, as always. <laughs> well, how are you? Hello, coming on the stage a couple of minutes ago, Mayor. Old fellow. Says he used to be with the Texas Rangers. And Jeff Rose is his son-in-law. Well, if he's old, he shouldn't worry you, Clyde. And if he doesn't live here, he can't vote for Jeff, so he doesn't worry me. Nard, have you seen this new edition of the Sentinel? He's got your whole record in there. Mine, too. Yours, too, Clyde. All the facts and figures, the dates, all the graphs, the payoffs, all the illegal taxes. But he says I ain't a proper judge. He says I'm guilty of malfeasance. Whatever that is. It means you are a walking whiskey vat and you bought your Justice of the Peace office years ago from Charlie Reeves. But I've still got my office. Only because I keep you there, don't forget that, Your Honor. Now, don't you just shut up, Amos. You know, a smart man who's handy with words. He's a tough opponent. But when he starts to smear you with the truth, he is deadly. If, if this paper ever gets to the governor's office. Get the boys all together. Round up every copy of this that's in circulation. Buy them, steal them, take them, but get them. Tell them you're all along, Nard. We give that newspaper fellow too much rope. Oh, you always got things done right. Oh, no, 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 Clyde. I, I'm not the sort of man to use force when gentle persuasion will serve. Why don't you get your deputies together and pay yourself a little call on Mr. Rose? Mm -hmm. You sure ache this Lundy over the coals. Well, if it's a battle he wants, let's give it to him. I'll pitch in and help. Do me good. A little action is what I need. You here on law business, Sheriff? No, we're just a bunch of plain citizens. We come to tell you that we don't hold with your brand of mudslinging, name-calling politics. And we don't want you printing nothing more. 
Nothing. Now, wait a minute, Sheriff. You can't interfere with the freedom of the press. You keep out of this, you old Morshorn. Morshorn? Listen, young fella. On your best day, you couldn't carry mules in my outfit. <laughs> Lenny's too powerful. He's too dangerous. Maybe next time he'll order Sheriff Barnes to use his gun. That's exactly why he's got to be fought and beaten. Yeah, the best thing for you to do is strap on your own gun, fight him in his way. Captain Hayes, I know gunplay was necessary in the days when you were with the Texas Rangers. But if we're ever going to have progress in the West, we've got to learn to fight our battles with ideas and words. Son, looks like you kind of run out of words. Well, maybe Hannah's right. Maybe I should give up. You know, a lot of people were glad to see me run against Lundy, but none of them would lift a finger to help. I know a handful of men. Just three. Look at straighten out Lundy and his gang in a hurry. Who's that, Captain? Fastest guns in the West. Finest rider. Top scouts. Crack men who served with me on the River Brazos. Who brought law and order to the Lone Star State. The pride of the Texas Rangers. First off, I'll send to Abilene for Nash Crawford. His gun was quicker than the blink of a cougar, faster than the flick of a prairie dog's tail. You'll be a gun, mister, and you'll be dead before it clears that. Hey, Gosh, Grandpa, is that exactly the way you had to shoot out with Sam Bass? Well, of course, the slow one all cut it up with gigaws and dinguses like this. Now you fellas clean this up for you, Marcy. And this is the exact kind of gun you carried in the Texas Rangers. Isn't it, Grandpa? Well, it's a much smaller than the Colt 45, more like a hideout gun. What's a hideout gun? Well, come on over here and I'll tell you about it. Take yourself down there. Now, I recall I was wintering in the bend on the San Saba River, east of Manadville, see? The captain sent me on a scout after a fellow who was wanted for murder and horse thieving. Well, boys, that's when I got my first taste of a hideout gun. You see? What was that crash I heard in here a minute ago? Oh, my fault, Ellie. Had a little accident with a lamp. I suppose the Texas Rangers just won another battle against overwhelming odds? Run along, boys. It's time for your nap. Oh, Mom. Grandpa was just going to tell us about... Keep, keep. Do like your mom says. Pa, I know you don't mean any harm, but you've got to stop filling the boys' heads full of those blood-curdling fairy tales about fighting horse thieves, Indians. Fairy tales? Boy, them things really happen. Fact is, I ain't even told the kids the bloodiest ones yet. Next, I'll send to Kansas City for Jason Fitch. Second best man with a gun and the finest scout in the Rangers. He has eyes like a hawk in the daytime, eyes like an owl at night. Captain, don't ride after them two fellers. I know they're a mile off, but I can tell they're Comanches. That big one's a chief. I can tell by the mark on his forehead. I see the tip of a feather sticking up behind a boulder way off there to the south. That's a feather of a scissor tail of pie catcher. There's another Comanche beneath it. Sam Bush, the Redskins bushwhackers. Oh, you must have been a marvelous scout, Mr. Pitts, to recognize all those terrible Indians so far away. Takes eyes like an eagle, Miss Fletcher. I'm Mrs. Murphy. 
Oh, yes. You're Mrs. Murphy, not Mrs. Fletcher. Hey, you're a pretty little thing. Mr. Fitch, you're really much too bold at times. Once had a shootout with three dudes over a woman like you. Mr. Fitch! Real catalog woman she was. Pretty little thing. Just like you. Mr. Fitch! Mr. Fitch! Mr. Fitch! Find your old woman, boy. This telegram just came for you. Somebody's dead. You don't have a black border. Let's see it. You tell me what that says, Miss Murphy. I need my strong glasses for reading. It says, Brazos. Brazos. That's the old code word of our company. It means trouble. Strap on your guns and hit the trail. What else does it say? It's just an address. Sully's Mine on Feather Wash, south of Boulder, Nevada. Signed, Captain Orrin Hayes. Captain Orrin Hayes. Our old outfit's back in action. I got a light out for Nevada, fast. We'll help you get back, Mr. Fitch. How can I help Captain Hayes? Don't you feel up to it? Sure, I feel up to it. And over and way past it. Nevada's a long way from Kansas City. I haven't got no horse, no artillery, no money to make a trip if I did. Don't show up, the captain will think I'm dead. Maybe ought to be. I just delivered this telegram for you. Who oh, in tarnation sent me a telegram? What's it say, Pa? Brazos. That's all, Brazos? No, there's an address here, too. Sully's Mine on Feather Wash, south of Boulder, Nevada. And it's signed Captain Lauren Hayes, my old captain from the Texas Rangers, Ellie. He needs me. He's calling me to ride again. It's trouble? Shooting and fighting? Brazos! It's old Coldwood. He always used to call us together. Well, it, it is a kind of reunion. Oh, it's been years since you've heard from Captain Hayes. And... Every man in our outfit would come a-running when he hears that word, Brazos. But your outfit's all broken up. It's spread over the whole country. Retired. No ranger retires perpendicular. Well, it's an awful long way to Nevada. Yeah, well, it was uh, a far piece down at the Oasis, past Fort Clark, and up the Devil's River, and on to Beaver Lake. They hit the kicker post, but we made it. Well, how are you going to eat and sleep along the way? What were you going to do for money? Oh, I've saved a little. From what? From not spending it. Well, your mind's made up. Then I guess I can only kiss you goodbye and wish you good luck. Yes, sir. I'll just throw this gear on my horse. Ah! What? You don't own a horse. Last but not least, I'll send for Gentleman George Agnew. I call him Gentleman because of his spotless character, his courtly manners, his fit and polished appearance. <laughs> Now, I'm telling you, Gentleman George, you stay out of this saloon for good. Doggone, Mac, I'm gonna miss going in that saloon of yours. You know, when I get to liking a man, I freeze to him. Well, I'm freezing you out. Now, there's your cards. And don't try using that slippery deck again. Next place, you're liable to wind up full of holes. Yeah, so they caught you pulling a little flim-flam and jiggery-pokery with the cards again, eh, George? 
Sure, if I just filled out an inside street, fair and square, I could have used this ace. This deuce, but the deuces wasn't wild. No, Mac didn't throw you out just for the exercise. <laughs> that joke was on Mac. All I did was reach in my pistol pocket for my harmonica. Here, I'll play you a little piece. Uh, George, I, I think you best move on out of range. Now, why don't you go on home and get some sleep? I ain't got no room, Frank. I've been doing all my sleeping in Mac's saloon in yonder. Oh, I didn't need a bed. I could toss you in jail. Jail. What for? Well, for most anything. For inciting a riot. For for littering up the streets. Now, now come, come on. on. I don't want to put you to all that bother, Frank. I'll just find myself another saloon. George, you have used up every saloon in the whole Oklahoma Territory. Well, there must be somebody building a new one around here somewhere. George? George Agnew? You! I got a telegram for you, George. Who in the world would be sending me a telegram? See this. Yeah, Brass. What's that mean? I want it. Well, now that don't surprise me none. Who by? The Texas Rangers. My old captain wants me to come up to the Nevada. You know I gotta get me a broomtail fiddle footer and ride. <laughs> Why, you long-legged, you neck broomtail? The first time I ever seen one jackass riding another. Now, who you calling a jackass? You old moss-back, bull-winded, kettle-bellied... George! Mash! <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you again. Yeah. You answered the captain's call? <laughs> yep. Think he had real need of good fighting men. But I don't know, seeing as how he called on you. Are you old coot? Who got them two cattle rustlers down in Bandera County that time? I did. I winged them for you. <laughs> George, uh, you're looking a little poorly. Kind of scummy and gone to grass belly. You don't look like you went or too good yourself. And who upped you up on that horse? You must be 95 if you're a day. Well, I reckon my gun ain't aged none. <laughs> I reckon that's what counts, Sergeant. Then let's ride. <laughs> yeah, Brazos! <laughs> Mighty sore, Jace. I'm Nash Crawford. Oh, sure. I know you anywhere, Nash. Red hair, straight as a ramrod, skinny waist like a girl's. Well, by jingles, the captain sure called up the best men of the old outfit. And the captain don't like to be kept waiting, so let's move out. <laughs> Wherever you may be, I'll tell you of some trouble that happened once to me. Our captain, he informed us one dark and stormy night. Before you reach the river, boys, you'll have yourself a fight. The rain came down like stone. The wind was even soaked. The wind was even soaked. I heard him give the yell, my feeling at that minute, no mother's son can tell. I know they were your best men, but I'm worried. What do you mean, son? They're a little old, aren't they? Yes, I guess they are. But then maybe so am I. 
My boy, a man never really sees himself till he looks at the friends he once knew. What are we going to do, Captain? Well, I certainly am not going to tell him how I feel. Sure, they're old. They haven't got much left. But they prove they're still rangers by answering my call. All they need is something that needs them. Something that needs doing. I know that feeling, too. I just wish I hadn't let you get into this. Now you stop fretting, Jeff. We're going to get you elected mayor. All right, all right. Sergeant, call assembly. You heard the captain fall in. Assemble, you juggy and sprinklehorn. I'm assembled. Well, assemble ain't what? Can you assemble neat and proper, Captain? All right, men, now, you know why I've called you all together. Yeah, to rouse out some tin horn mayor and his poor flesh and gang. I say leave us right in and clean them out tonight, Captain. Hold it, Nash, hold it. See, Lundy has the support of a corrupt judge, gun-happy sheriff, plus all his deputies. Well, if there ain't more than 20 of them, Captain, I'll ride in and get them myself. Hold it, hold it, man. This comes to a showdown. It could be, a, well, quite a fight. We haven't been together in some time. Maybe we ought to sharpen up for a couple of days. You know, some of us might be just a little rusty. I ain't rusty, Captain. Practice my draw most every day. I've been training a couple of young fellas down in Abilene. I guess you ain't heard, Captain. I've been making a name for myself in that Oklahoma Territory from one end to the other. You figure where these specs are slowing me down? Ain't so. Just holding me up sharper in other ways. I can smell what a man's fixing to do. I can hear the sneeze of a flea. You can. All right, man, that's good. But we're wasting time. Election is only a week off. Jeff, you ride in town tonight? Tell Lundy he's got until tomorrow morning to clear out, along with his crooked friends. And if you don't take the warning, Captain Hayes and his rangers are going to ride in at dawn, ready for a showdown. Oh, I am disappointed in you, Jeff. I thought you were strongly against violence and gunplay. I don't think they'll be in. I figure you'll go. Texas Rangers? They're a mean bunch. Maybe I ought to injunct the legal paper against them. Whereas the people of this dear town declare that all troublemakers looking to make... Why don't you save that for your next Supreme Court decision? Go finish your beer, will you? Well, thank you. You said that old fellow wouldn't worry you none when he rode into town. Just a bluff. Jeff Rose would never sanction open warfare. You gonna do nothing about it? Just gonna sit there and let them rangers ride in free? Ex-rangers, Clyde. They got no authority here. Sure, sure. Let them ride in free, but if any of them start making any trouble, you have got a sworn duty to put down any attempted gunplay on the streets of our fair town, Sheriff. Now you're talking, Nard. We'll shoot out on Main Street.
Captain Hayes of the Texas Rangers, sir. Did you receive my ultimatum? Captain, I just uh, couldn't believe that you were serious. <laughs> I have the greatest admiration for the reputation of the Rangers, but I do believe that you have no true military authority, and certainly not here in the state of Nevada. That's a legal ruling. Section 4, Article 2. Well, all men known by the... All right, Judge. We are here as a private company of vigilantes, Mr. Mayor, to preserve law and order and to ensure an honest election. How would you propose to do that, sir? By seeing you and your associates out of this town now, by force if necessary. <laughs> Captain, as you see, we are unarmed. I'll give you one minute to get armed. Captain. <laughs> we are a, a peaceable town of law and order. We do not want any bloodshed on our streets. Now, why can't we settle this obvious uh, electioneering stunt in a sporting manner, eh? <laughs> why don't we have a shooting contest, the losers to leave town? Now, you select your uh, best marksman and fastest draw... Now, when I shout draw, go for your gun. Ready? I figured he's going to camp first. Let me have him. I cannot draw you the best day you ever lived, Sheriff. My son-in-law, you idiot. Ooh. Captain, I'm afraid that you and your men have been the victims of some poor advice. Boulder is a friendly and peaceful town. Now, if you all just... Step inside to the Hell Dorado. I'll stand drinks all around. That makes sense to me. Line up. Retreat and reform. Oh. Well, Jeff, it's just like you always said. The West has changed. Things aren't what they used to be. Turn down another drink. Well, <laughs> Mayor Lundy doesn't approve of any business coming into my place anyway. Well, in that case, Miss McGuire, we accept your offer with pleasure. Good. <laughs> Singer, dancer, and you own a saloon? 
Say, you're a pretty little thing. Oh. <laughs> I never had the honor of serving a whole company of rangers before. No, I ain't been in the rangers for quite a spell, Cassie. Just that uh, you claim to see when I drawed down the sheriff out there. Well, it was a day when you were the fastest gun in the West, Nash. Eh? Much obliged, Captain. But I reckon today I'm just a... Well, I guess I'm just the biggest windbag. You know, I didn't even get a shot off. You ain't alone, Sergeant. Only thing I've shot off in the past few years is my big mouth. Now, come on. I don't want any of that kind of talk around here. I didn't invite you in here to hold a wake. I just wanted you to know that there's some folks in this town who are mighty proud of what you all tried to do. It's a dirty shame when a whelp like Lenny puts a squeeze on a pretty little thing like you. Oh, I've been hanging on hoping Jeff would beat him in the election next week. And I'm going to keep hanging on till Lundy is plumb wore out. Or until he shoots me. And even then, they're going to have to pound me into a boot hill like a stake. Because I'm just too stubborn to lie down. <laughs> yeah. She'd have been some Texas Ranger. Teddy's a tea snake. That's a lot of mad Irish on the prod. You know, a little petticoat like that keeps losing and fighting back. What's ailing us? You know, Jason's right. We only lost the first skirmish. No fella in the wrong can stand up against a fella that's in the right. He keeps on a coming. Oh, man. First of all, I... I want to tell you that I'm grateful for the way you responded to my call quickly and loyally. No questions asked. I appreciate that. But I, I want to apologize for doing it. You see, I had forgotten that you'd retired honorably from the Rangers and set up new lives for yourself because you were, well, you were tired of guns and fighting. Now, that ain't so, Captain. We just used up all the bad engines and the outlaws in Texas. We just cleaned ourselves out of business. And we didn't retire. We just ran out of something to do. No. No, there, there was a time when we could have set this town on its ear. But... We've got to face it. We're over the hill now. Me? Well, I'm just a witless old blockhead to bring you all the way out here on a wild goose chase. Captain, you all done speech making? Yes, I'm all done that. Except uh, anybody wants any help or money to get home. I ain't going home. Not yet. Not until I get done what I come here to do. I ain't never crawled home with a tail between my legs in my life. And I'm too old to take on any new bad habits like that now. Oh, Nash. Now, Captain, look, just set yourself down. And let me lose your spell, huh? Just a minute. You can't pull rank on me. You're only a first sergeant. I'm pulling age on you. Age. Age. That's all we got working for us now. Ain't that what you just said? Yeah. No, I got laughed at out there today. It's a feeling I ain't never had before. And I tell you, don't sit easy with me. Well, you almost outdrawed him, Nash. Almost gets a man a quick funeral. We got to go along with what the captain said. Time's been tailing us, and it's so it took us. All right, so we are a mite older. A man eats fruit, he's dead. Sometimes a man's dead when he ain't no use anymore. Yeah, I know what you mean. Now, look, we got plenty of, of use left in us. I've been told them up these years. And the figures there's something around 275 years of fighting savvy in this outfit put all together in a lump. We can whip this Lundy and his gang if we just go at it right. Use the right artillery. What do we use? What do we use? We use our wits. Well, maybe they've gone rusty, too. Or we wouldn't have come running up here like a bunch of young buckos in the first place. It ain't so. We all come here a running because we was needed. We packed our bowie knives and our saddlebags and our coats. There's one thing we didn't pack in there. That's our wits. All right. All right, Nash, but the election is only a week off. What have you got in mind? Well, now, Captain... 
Do you recall how we rounded up them tin horn gamblers in Chimney Butte? Yeah. And how we bamboozled that big gang of common sure horse thieves on the border? Yeah. Trickery and deception. The old theory. Divide and conquer. That's it. Get inside the enemy camp, no way at his vitals without him knowing it. You know, this might work. It just might work here. I get an idea. It's horse high, bull strong, and hog tight. <laughs> That's 30 days or 30 dollars. <laughs> hey, ain't that one of the old moss packs that rode into town today? That's the one I blew the hat off of. What's he up to? Flip flopping around like a wall eyed mule in a windstorm. Mm, he'll probably come back to even up the score. Couldn't find his gun in the daylight. <laughs> I'll go down to jail. You go across there and prod him with some of your legal talk. So now hold on, Clyde. You're the law man. He ain't got nothing against you. Now go on. Well, I... Howdy. <laughs> you one of those old rangers that uh, rode in town today? Well, I, I reckon I can't call that hand. Uh, you, uh, looking for somebody? Now, uh, nobody in particular. Well, it appeared to me that you were tailing the sheriff. You look like one of the honest men around here. I don't suppose you got any love for the crooked law in this town, huh? Well, maybe. Well, I'm tailing the sheriff right enough. But I ain't such a good shot no more. I gotta get just the right distance and the right light and all. And... But sooner or later... I'll kill him. Mister, you happen to be talking to Judge Amos Polk, duly constituted to order all felonness and unruly gunslingers strung up. Judge Polk? Well, now I'm glad it's you. You're a friend of Mayor Lundy's, ain't you? Well, we, uh, closely associated, yeah. Well, I've been hired by the mayor to do this job. Why, that's impossible. Oh, the mayor's a smart politician. He knows the sheriff ain't helping his election chances any. With the lawman and his gun, he's gone. The, the mayor's record will look a whole lot cleaner. And he can pick himself a nice, shiny new sheriff. But Lundy wouldn't have... <laughs> but why you? Well, I just blew in and now be blown right out. Lundy won't have me around and he won't owe me nothing. Except the nice bundle I already got in my pocket here. It's a lie. Bundy wouldn't do it. That old buzzer's loose between the ears. Maybe the old man's better than you think he is, Clyde. Maybe he just let you outdraw him today to get you off guard and make you get careless. worried about. You already proved you could outdraw him. He's tailing me. You've been tailed before. All right, let me get him. I'll make it real easy for him. Get real close. Let him reach for... No, 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 no. Besides, he is no competition for you, Clyde. <laughs> anyway, the town has already laughed him out. Now, Clyde, they're on your side now, but if you kill him, they're going to turn against you. He should you give him up. Nasty taste in the mouth right before election. You're willing to let him get me? Well, Clyde, let me put it to you this way. If you get him, I'm going to have to take that little star away from you and get me a more peace-loving sheriff. Hmm? Mm -hmm. 
Are you going to raise the call, Steele? Pondering. I already got my last month's wages and half the next. The cards have never been so good to me. You're too many for me, fella. Streak like that ain't natural. I just call. Our ace is king high. I got a pair of with a little four high. Don't you, Dobie, little dinky pot. Wait a minute. You open this, I recall. Yeah, that's right, Dobie. You got to open it. What's the difference? I told you you had me beat. It's uh, real plain. Like you didn't want to show open it. You had three cases. I didn't know where I got them. Easy. You did the shuffling and dealing. Yeah, and I cut. I don't want to hold up a good poker game over some picky little squabbles over the rules. But seven aces in one deck. Whew. That's a lot of aces. Maybe it's a bad deck. Been mighty good to you. Till now. You saying I rigged this deck, steel? I'm saying it. <laughs> Got one deputy on the ground and three in here. Very clever, George. I'm just glad they didn't catch you making a hanky panky with the cards. Oh, they were easy marks. I got to put ten aces in that deck, but I just didn't want to show up my talent. I hope all this flim flam works. But London knows we're still hanging around this town. He can't see us doing anything that'll jeopardize his security. He knows Nash is still turning the night, sir. That don't bother him none. Can't his hide. He's already seen a sample of my shooting. Well, maybe he's figuring that we're thinking on something. Yeah, thinking there's one thing is bound to give the mayor fits. He can't tax it, he can't stop it, and he can't even tell when anybody's doing it. Hey, this is going to work out just fine. And we still got three more days for election. You know, it's about time for me to go take another hard twist in the sheriff's tail. Reckon he sees me following him in his sleep now. That is, if he's doing any sleeping. <laughs> what about Jason? He's saying it was a sign up? Oh, yeah, he's right about now. I figure he ought to be setting old Judge Polk's shirt tail on fire. <laughs> You're a mighty generous man, Jason. <laughs> well, it ain't often a man gets the honor and the privilege of drinking with a famous judge, appointed by the governor himself. <laughs> well, I got a secret for you, Jason. I wasn't appointed by the governor. <laughs> I paid $10 for my office, two buffalo skins, and a case of whiskey. <laughs> no. <laughs> Say, that's a good one. Why didn't you buy the mayor job? What did you want to be a judge for? Well, I wanted to be where I could do people the most good. And by golly, I was, too, because I wasn't in there two days, and I let ten of my best friends out of jail. That's doing good. <laughs> man does good like that ought to get himself a medal. Yeah. <coughs> Shame Marilyn is fixing to dirty up such a fine reputation. Marilyn, what's that, Jason? I just can't sit still for a thing like that. I'll tell you what, Your Honor. Why don't you sell me your office and get out before he does it to you? I'll give you a hundred dollars for it. That's a thousand percent profit. Oh, Marlon, he can't do that to me. He needs me. I make some mighty tricky decisions for him. Why, I even had a couple of fellas hung for him. I know it's hard for an honorable man like you to swallow. But Lundy's fixing to dump you just before the election. No. He's got to. The governor got a hold of a copy of Jeff Rose's paper. Well, I'm not going to take the blame for this all by myself. He's just as guilty as I am. Well, that's what he's fixing to do. He's going to have a real house cleaning. Clean up this town. Show the folks that he's just an honorable, upright man taken in by a couple of crooks like you and Sheriff Barnes. Barnes? 
Why didn't the iron to get me to kill him? Well, I guess he was a mite more fond of you. Excuse me. You're boiled, Amos. Get out. You try it, Nard. We're in this thing together. You're not going to dump me. <laughs> Amos, what in the world are you screaming about? Nobody's going to dump you. No. You, you, uh, still, it uh, might be kind of a good idea if you started thinking about retiring. You know, you, you could go out to California and take it easy. Well, you're not going to edge me out. I got all of my records hid away. And if I go down, I'm going to drag you with me. <laughs> you hit him like a blast of buckshot. Old Judge Pope is already out and hunting for grass. <laughs> yeah, it's only three days before election. Lundy doesn't even seem disturbed. Well, there's one thing you can figure. He ain't dumb. Yeah, he ought to be feeling the burr under his blanket any time now. I'm a little concerned about Judge Polk and Sheriff Barnes. They're behaving in a in a most peculiar manner. I'm afraid somebody or something has gotten to them. The judge is running real scared about something, that's a fact. Yeah, I figure the sheriff's just a little edgy about that old gunny tailing him night and day. <laughs> well, why don't you tail him, Steele? I want to know everyone he talks to and everywhere he goes. And Tucker, cover the judge the same way, eh? Figured the old man couldn't get me. Hired you to do the killing, huh? Now, wait just one minute. If I wait any longer, I'll be dead. Two deputies down and two to go. Keeping an eye on you, mister. Well, both of you can just get. My orders to trail the judge to come right from the mayor himself. Lundy put you on me. That's funny. The mayor gave me the same job. You know, this is a mighty confusing town. You can't tell who's out to get who. Lundy wouldn't hire an old hammerhead like you. Not when he's got us. Gentlemen, maybe I can outshoot you. I got a hundred hard dollars that says I can't. Now, you want to ante up or pass the buck? I ain't got a hundred. Me neither, but I'd sure like to get yours, mister. Well, just throw yourselves in the pot. I'll put up the hundred, and if you lose, you both can just get out of town. Good. Let me have that hundred. Now, hold on. What's the contest? Wing shooting for distance and accuracy in the dark. Wing shooting? Yeah. 
For what? See that flock of geese coming over? I'm going to get that bull goose. You boys just picture yourselves going out of the flock. I guess you boys got what they call a touch of night blind. Maybe we ought to try something easier than that. Three cushion or ricochet shoot. Yeah, we'll try that. Come on with me. Now, you see that light in Texas saloon over there? I'm gonna shoot through the door, shoot that light up. That bullet's gonna bounce against that pot belly stove, ricochet across the street, Hit that anvil in front of the blacksmith shop, ricochet across the street again, hit that cowbell over that store, come back towards me, and I'm going to catch that lead slug with my teeth. Hey, man, why is that good? <laughs> that bullet with my teeth that might have passed by me and hit one of you boys right between the eyes. Now, you want to try your hands or you just want to get on your horses and ride? We'll, uh, we'll be riding. You boys ought to find good work back east. Of course, there ain't no cause for any real shooting. <laughs> it ain't safe here no more. All my deputies are either dead or they left town. I ain't got no backup. You shot one of them yourself. Well, I figured somebody said that... You figured. Somebody said. What is the matter with you, Clyde, anyway? You you just falling apart or something, Clyde? You falling apart? Is, is this job gotten to be too big for you? Hmm? Or maybe you just soon not be part of my new administration after I get reelected, huh? My price has come down, Your Honor. It's fifty dollars now. Well, I'll take it. It'll pay the stage fare to Mexico for good and valuable consideration. Here, paid over, I do hereby hand you the right and title, Honor, and elements of my office. And what the Almighty has joined up, let no man monkey with. Right on schedule. Two days before election. But Lundy's still here. I reckon it's time to pay him a little visit. Gentlemen, gentlemen, come in, come in, come in. We're we're a little crowded in here, but I'm sure we can squeeze you in. <laughs> What's your pleasure? We're here to see you out of town. Oh dear, I thought we'd settled all that foolishness. You're through, Lundy. The judge and the sheriff just took off on the last stage. Oh? Well, small loss. Matter of fact, it'll allow me to dispense some patronage after I'm elected, eh? <laughs> New blood. As a matter of fact, I must thank you for helping me to clean house. Why, without your tin horn judge and your gun happy sheriff, people will begin to get the feel of what it's like to be free. Yeah, maybe the people will vote you out. I believe the people will vote the way I recommend. Mm -hmm. You can't scare them into voting for you. Your gunmen have left town. You just ain't got no protection. That is where you're wrong. <laughs> you know, I, I was puzzled at first, but then it suddenly occurred to me what you gentlemen were up to. So, I imported an entirely new staff of associates. Now, I believe I must ask you to get out of town. Now, by high noon. It's a bluff. 
Gentlemen, allow me to introduce you. These men happen to be the deadliest guns in the West today. Big Red Connors. Little Billy Ford. The Barton Brothers. Frank Mace. Late Short. Give up. It's no use. Well, we almost had Lundy whipped. This time we'll do it. Please, Papa. He said be out of town by high noon. It's almost that time now. Things are a lot worse than they were when we started, Captain. Jeff, we can't back down now. We want the support and the respect of all the townspeople. And they're ready to vote for you. You really believe your handful of old rangers can make a stand against that gang of lawless cutthroats? My men are setting up our first line of defense now. This town will long remember the gunfight at Cassie's Corral. Sounds about dead center. I had it shipped all the way from New York in the good old days. Don't you worry, Miss Cassie. If we bust it, we'll get you a bigger and better one from that fancy mail order house called Monkey Wards. I'm only afraid it's going to suffer considerably. <laughs> Can't suffer anymore, and it's already been suffering. <laughs> well, I think you better be on your way over to the general store. Uh, good luck, Captain. Get some heavy to ram it. Now, wait. Need a 
Luciana. No, just got me between drawers. Get down the street. Rush him out. of Captain Hayes and his valiant Texas Rangers, this town can now look forward to the start of a new era. As your duly elected mayor, I promise a new day that will last a long, long time. Honest lawmen, true justice in our court. We may never be a big town, but we'll be peaceable, quiet, and happy. Raising our children in an atmosphere free of gambling, vice, and corruption. <laughs> And to completely erase our soiled and tarnished past, we'll even change the names on a lot of things. <laughs> well, I reckon it's time for us to be riding. You want me to help you up on that horse, you old droop horn? Any of you fellas come up wanted for hanging, I'll be glad to try your case. I'm a $50 judge now, you know. <laughs> I'm proud of you, boys. Best outfit a man ever headed up. That goes for me, too. I hope you all come back real soon. Next time I'll do my uh, spider dance for you. <laughs> <laughs> I sure would like to be here, Miss Cassie. That next time. <laughs> Captain, if you need us, if it ain't too long, that is. Attention!
I head east, I'll be in that territory of Oklahoma. I reckon if I split the difference between you, I ought to come out somewhere near Kansas City. Say, you know them two young fellas I said have been training down in Texas? Yeah. They're only seven and eight year old. They're my grandsons. What will you train them for? Be half broke? Well, I reckon there's a few things I can still teach them. Like not making some of the fool mistakes I've done. It's always the way it is. When a man starts handing out good advice, he, he ain't up to set no more bad examples. Well, now I ain't here to you winning no big battles in Oklahoma. Well, I started a bunch of them. Nearly ever slimmed down there. I just wasn't there to finish. You know, Sergeant, it must be nice to have your own home and your family and watch your grandkids grow up. I sort of got a family in Kansas City. These old timers in this old folks home. We could put you up in Abilene, George. We got many places for you to bend down, that is if... No, thank you, Sergeant. I'll just go back to Oklahoma and find myself a new saloon. You know something? Since I've been up here, I've got my old knack back with the cards again. I just might get myself a lucky streak of going down there. <laughs> I reckon I got enough to tell the folks back home to last out the rest of my time. <laughs> you know, I've been accused of telling tall tales before, but just wait till you hear this one. <laughs> well, I guess we better be riding out. So long. Um, good luck, fellas. Well, so long, Rangers. We'll get together again. Real soon. Well, so long. So long.